Hi, thank you for joining us today in the Texas Heart Institute studio. I have the very sincere pleasure of being with Dr. Jeffrey Olin, who is our guest speaker for Grand Rounds today and gave a fabulous talk on the disease of fibromuscular dysplasia, which is not rare. Dr. Olin um, heads the vascular lab at Mount Sinai and is a full professor, actually trained in nephrology, which I was so shocked to learn, and then studied vascular medicine and then became um, enamored with kind of rare vascular diseases. How did that begin, Dr. Olin? <laughs> that, and that's a good question. It is a good question, and it's nothing I planned, I will tell you that. Um, when I was at the Cleveland Clinic many years ago, I remember seeing um, people with rare diseases, one of them being Berger's disease, mm. thromboangiitis obliterans, which interestingly was first described at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City by Leo Berger. Uh -huh. But I also saw a woman, a young woman who had a stroke from fibromuscular dysplasia, and I remember the effects that it had on her body and on her psychological outlook. And I became interested in after that, started writing papers on it, and then people started coming. Right. I'm super interested as a, a trainee of young doctors, and you and I both share that passion. And how do you, how do you select for the phenotype of the inquisitive physician that will, because I love that. I personally really love that, and I love to take the weird opportunity to further the career of somebody who wants to do something that's kind of against the grain. And we need people outside of the box thinking yeah that, move the needle. that's a hard question to answer I try to stress a very important point and that is never give up on trying to figure out what's going on in other words don't be superficial but I said there's never a day I don't look something up and I try to encourage that in the trainees and some get it and others don't and it's either you have it or you don't have it I think that in our current you know environment of everybody under so much pressure and demand to produce in some regard that it's hard to give people the time to chase their passions. I'm hopeful that with all the media attention that we're providing to your rare disease and your very important interest into these diseases that we're changing the way people look at medicine and how how people look at their own vascular health and yeah, it's, it's not just what we're doing, it's what the patients are doing. For example, in my talk today, I talked about Pam Mace. I mean, she's a registered nurse. None of this would have happened without her. She has really just constantly, on her off time, tried to increase awareness among physicians, among patients, give advice. Her phone is always open to anybody who wants to call her. There's only so much that we have been able to do, but when the patients get involved, that's when things really move forward. So how has this Facebook networking amongst patients impacted your research and your clinical practice? Well, I'll, I'll make it a little more generalized than Facebook. Mm -hmm. How has social media right. affected it? And I think what happens now, patients who are interested in their own health go online and they try to find someone who's an expert in the condition they think they have. Mm -hmm. They may look at lectures on YouTube, they may go on Facebook, they may go on Twitter. There's a million different ways they can do it. If they have the means to travel to a center where there's an expert, they do it. Mm -hmm. If they don't have the means, then they utilize things like the Fibromuscular Dysplasia Society of America to help with advice and who they might see around their area. Mm -hmm. Social media has changed everything in the way patients are referred to us for unusual diseases. I have to say, that was the biggest surprise to me because I, I don't always ask my patients, how did you find me? Um, but when I learned that the way that many people self-referred themselves was through you know, social media. So we have to be good about our social media yeah, and be absolutely. responsible and that's partly what this is about and we're just really trying to boost the awareness in our local area. Um, I think we've gotten the word out pretty well around here and the physicians here are becoming quite astute about it and um, are, you know, responsibly patient about looking at angiography and when to intervene.
think your work's made a big impact on, you know, people's health. Yeah, it's not, it's not just that we're going to increase awareness on fibromuscular dysplasia. By having an interest in that, you're going to increase awareness of a whole host of other diseases that affects women that you will become experts in just because, because. of an interest in fibromuscular mm -hmm. dysplasia. I didn't go into this with the idea of being an expert on carotid dissections or right. vertebral dissections. It just happened that way. Yeah, I could see this. I could also see how I'm going to be needing to take an extra course on reading CTAs as, you know, that's not part of my basic training, but certainly we look at uh, my, my pockets today are filled with images to be reviewed right. and having the right kind of people around you is certainly, you need to be in a big center that has all the people to help you to do your job, I assume. I agree. So I really just want to thank you for raising the awareness and for coming and spending your time here with us in Texas today. Um, actually, you elevated what we do and we thank you sincerely for your efforts. It's been a pleasure and I hope Houston wins tonight.